Hey guys, how are you? So, a question was put to me about time. So, let's just get into it. He says, I am sending to you a concern of mine and also some other people I am talking on Twitter or LinkedIn. All of us are self-taught engineers or wannabes. Anyhow, we are worried that if we get a job in a company, we won't be able to manage with time. I mean, we all don't understand what time means in a company. We think that if we get a to-do list project, for example, we have to deliver it by tomorrow. So those questions are, how time works in a company? Are there timelines? And what if we need to learn a new technology? Let me give you the bullet points. Number one, it all depends on the company you work for. Every company will have their own processes and procedures in place. So first of all, so there, there's no universal absolute there. That being said, all these things are very much negotiable, meaning uh, the company will say, we have to do X, Y, and Z project. And then you will respond, well, I think I can get that done by next week. And they go say, well, I don't know about that. You think you can get it done sooner? Or, okay, that sounds good. So everything is negotiated. When you first start out, it is expected as an entry-level developer that you are not going to be nearly as productive as you will be a year later or two years later. So I think any reasonable employer will go, yeah, okay, don't worry. Uh, we expect you to work a little bit slower at first. So how does time work in a company? First question. Again, as I said, it depends on the company. It depends on how they're set up. Now, that being said, a lot of the ideals that people talk about in software development, about uh, using uh, unit test cases and, uh, and documentation and how you roll out projects, all that goes out the door, by the way, when you're in a production environment because there are deadlines and people say, we got to get it out, we got to get it out, we got to get it out. A lot of the academic um, ideas about ideals and ideas about software development don't apply a lot of times in the real world, that's for sure. Are there timelines? Of course there are timelines. Of course there are timelines. So again, as you become more experienced a developer, one of the um, traits of an experienced developer is their ability to be able to properly assess how long it will take you to complete a particular job. And you get that through experience. Now, I give uh, in my freelance course, ironically, it's also included in my mentoring program, shameless self-promotion. Um, I teach you how to actually learn how to assess how long it will take you to build project A, B, and C. There's all these things to look into. So I include that in the freelance course. I should indicate in that course that you learn how to track and judge time. I think I do. But anyway, that's also the mentoring program. So that just comes with time, being able to uh, figure out how long it will take for you to get something done. And that has to do with timelines. When you become more experienced, you'll learn to do this more effectively. And then you'll be able to set expectations with management so that you don't say you're going to get it done by the 25th. And then you misjudge and actually it's going to take you until the fifth, you know, 10 days later. That's no good. If you think it's going to take you 10 days to do, typically you say, ah, it'll take me 15 days to do. Give yourself some leeway. If you get it done earlier, fantastic, right? But uh, again, timelines, yes, there's always timelines. Sometimes you're going to have to work super hard in software, especially like the gaming industry. They'll run you ragged, so you got to be careful of that. Next, what if I need to learn a new technology? That's par for the course, my friends, par for the course in software development. One of the big illusions out there put out by the Nerdosphere on YouTube's young nerdlings in their 20s who, uh, you know, by their age, you know, they don't have much experience, is that you have to learn X, Y, and Z technology and you walk into the office and you'll know everything and you'll be a superstar. It doesn't work that way. You get in at entry level and then you start learning. Every single business will have different technologies they implement. They'll have different processes. They'll have different expectations. There are no universal rules. That's another illusion put out there. So yeah, learning new technology is very common. In fact, uh, you'll find, especially if you're working for small, medium-sized, large, small, medium-sized companies, you will find yourself having to learn new technologies all the time. And that's cool because once you've learned one or two programming languages or one or two different frameworks, 
to learn new ones is pretty simple. In my development career uh, as a freelancer or building my own SaaS, etc., I would learn new things all the time. In fact, in the last few years of my a career as a freelancer, I would go into projects with zero expectations vis-a-vis -vis what technology I would implement for the job because it all depends on the job. Now, there was a time where I was like a Java zealot. Everything had to be Java, you know? But as I got more experience and I got out there, I realized that certain companies uh, and certain jobs, Java was not, ne it's not necessarily ideal for them. In fact, it could have been a very bad choice for them. And it was not uncommon for me to learn some new weird language or some framework based on the needs of the project. Some really weird stuff too. But that's okay because when you become more advanced as a developer, you learn to become a language agnostic. You become neutral vis-a-vis -vis the language. You don't care. You know, whether you do it in JavaScript or C Sharp or Python or PHP, whatever works, whatever works, you know, it all depends on the job at hand. So that's another sign of a noob developer. Noob developers get caught up in the languages. Ah, yes, you can have a favorite language, but what you will discover in time as a professional developer, what you discover is that languages are circumstantial. Some languages are better in, in certain circumstances as they might not be very good in another circumstance. Same thing with cars, like Porsche 911 Turbo. Fantastic car on a nice smooth highway. But if you want to go off-roading, that is probably the worst vehicle to get. You're probably much better off with a Jeep, right? So it depends on what you do. Same thing with programming, programming as well. That being said, don't get me wrong, you know, a lot of the languages compete to solve the same problem. So for examples, for example, you can create web apps with Python, with some backend like Django. You can create uh, web apps with PHP, with C Sharp, with Java, with JavaScript, uh, with Ruby, heaven forbid. Uh, that's a little Ruby joke. But you get the idea. Perl, so many other languages, TypeScript, you know. There's all kinds of different solutions you can use to create web apps. Now, which one you use depends on a lot of factors. Could be technical factors, as I discussed, there may be some technological advantage to using JavaScript in certain circumstances. There may be technological advantages to using C Sharp in another circumstance, but there's also business considerations. If you're working at a business where they have all their stacks are in Java, they're probably not going to want to do stuff in Python unless it was absolutely necessary. Why? Think of it. If you're a business owner, and you have all this investment in Java, and you got to hire Java programmers, do you want to build a small part of your system, your infrastructure in Python, where all of a sudden now you got to get Python people or you got to get your Java people to learn Python or understand Python. Again, learning Python would be not a big deal for Java people, but it's still, you know, it's a bit of a headache, you know. Um, that being said, don't get the wrong idea. In many, many, many companies, they will implement their tech stacks in multiple technologies. So you may have part of it in Python, part of it in Java, part of it in JavaScript, depending. So there you go, that's it. Us, we use uh, PHP, we use JavaScript in production. I've used uh, Ruby in production. I've used, uh, of course, Java, uh, a little bit C-sharp.net in production, and other stuff as well. So I hope that answers your question. There's no rule per se in how time works in a company it depends on the company i think people coming out of school they're concerned about these things like timelines and time and protocol because you're taught in school that there's this illusion that this is the way things are and it's just simply not the case it's simply not the case it's totally different depending on different businesses hope that helps bye bye if you want to learn how to code from a veteran developer such as myself, been coding since 94. Check out my bootcamp, link below, unclesteph.com.